Today you're going to learn the first step in creating a wireframe. When you create a wireframe, you are creating the equivalent of a blueprint for a house. It's a blueprint for your web page. And as a blueprint, it should be in grayscale, with the exception of links, which can be blue, but you really don't want to bring color into the equation. The wireframe is just for planning your page to know where things are going to go. When you are working in the digital media area, you should be always doing some sort of sketch or storyboard or plan. And for a website, your plan is a wireframe. The first thing that you have to do is you have to create a page layout. And there's lots of different page layouts. Let's show you a couple of examples. Most page layouts are going to have some sort of header, possibly some sort of footer. They may have multiple columns. This has a, life, a left column and a main area. This is the W3 school site. Header, footer, main column, sidebar. Lynda.com, header, footer, very large footer, two column layout. And MaryHelp.net, this has got a header area, main area, sidebar, and I've set my background. This is the body color, the color of the web page that I'm not really trying to control or edit. You can set the background color, which some people choose to do often. It's set to white. To begin, we need to start with a document. It's just going to be a white page for us to build on. So we're going to choose a fireworks document and we want the width to be 1060 and we want the height to be 1000 to start. And then I'm going to hit OK. And usually when I'm working with this I don't have it zoomed completely in. I'm usually sitting at 66 percent or so. And this is not the shape of your standard web page because I'm allowing for side area to show that to represent that you could have a background color. So I'm going to do this just by using blocks and I will lay out blocks and I'll explain what each one means. So I'm going to choose my block here and I don't have to be really exact I'm just going to throw something up here because I usually like to control exactly what size it's going to be down in the properties settings. So I'm setting it to 1060 by 1000 and I want my X and my Y coordinates to be zero so that I just have a blank black page. And in my layers, this is my rectangle. You can simply call it background. And it's a good idea to label these. And I'm going to lock it because I don't want to move it around while I'm doing the next part. And this just represents any background color that you would have. In the next step, after we do the page layouts and after we do the wireframe, the next step is a storyboard. Then we get into colors and graphics. At that point, we would change this color. So it's important to label it. The next area would represent my container. And I typically make that white. Now, this is for your own planning purposes, so there aren't really hard and fast rules about this. But you'll find that they're pretty standard. So I'm going to set my width here to the actual page that I would usually program a container to be, which would be 960. And I'm going to set it to be 980 wide. And I want my X to start in at 50. That's going to balance it with 50 pixels on each side. And I want my Y coordinates to start at 5 because I like a little bit of the background to show through at the top of my website. If you don't, you'd set it to 0. And this would represent a div tag, which would be called my container. And a div tag is simply a division of the web page. And you can nest them inside each other to create logical breakdowns of the web page. In HTML4, which is still the standard, and XHTML1, you just use div tags. But the world is moving into HTML5. Even though it is not an accepted standard, it's already being supported by browsers and people are already programming in it. Div tags that are commonly used have gotten their own names. And so you'll see us using those as we move forward into the next section in Dreamweaver. So this represents my blank canvas of my web page. I'm again going to lock the container because now that it's here, 
I'm not going to do a lot with it. Now again, I could choose to have my div tags in here, the different segments of my container, show some of the background color or, or go 100% of the way across. I'm going to show a little bit of the background just so that you can remember that there's a container holding the pieces together. Now typically I will pick for my other div sections, which are just my logical page sections, I usually pick a medium to light gray. And I will draw them, and again I can adjust the numbers here. I'll just start by drawing about where they'd go, and then I tweak it a little bit. And so that would be, I don't really want it to be 960, I'm going to make it 950. I'm going to start the X at 55. I want to start the Y at 15. Now let's start that at 10, and let's make the height 180. Now this would typically be a header section. This could be a masthead. It would contain a search bar perhaps. It would contain buttons. It would contain information about the site name. We'll choose that when we get into adding those components. But right now, that's the amount of space I'm setting aside to hold the header. I could set the background color to white, it could be set to a picture, it could be set to a color. Right now it doesn't matter, we're just figuring out where the pieces of the page are going to go. I'm going to do a standard two column layout with a footer. So my next box, let's go ahead and select that tool. Oops, that was a color tool, let's select the box tool, rectangle tool and let's draw a column. Now typically this is going to be for my navigation and if I'm going to make it a navigation bar I like to make it 200 pixels wide and I'm going to set the height to 450. That would vary and again this does not represent the actual color it would be. I'm going to tweak it a little bit as far as where it's sitting by using my arrow keys. I can move it one pixel at a time with those and then I'm going to draw I'm going to name this rectangle up for here. That's my header. This rectangle is my sidebar. Just giving them the names, and these would be the names of the divisions that I'd have in my page. Draw another box in here. And we'll tweak it a bit. Let's set this to a width of 720. Um, let's make that 730. And then again, I'm using my arrow keys just to position it exactly where I want it. Because you usually do leave a little bit of padding between these sections when you program your page. So that would be my main content could be called either main or content when I named the div tag. Now for my footer I want this to be 950 wide and 115 and let's play with that alignment. There, that's the basic blocks for my page layout. I have a footer which would contain information about how to contact me. It might have copyright information. Main content would go here. It would contain images, text. I would have my navigational structure here and I would have some sort of masthead here. So that's just how I want to break down my page. On the website, I show you several other possible layouts, and you could create any one of those. So your first step, and I do recommend locking these, and make sure you save this. And this is going to be wireframe one, because this is step one of my wireframe, and I like to save incrementally. When I get the next step done, I'll call it wireframe two. That way, if I don't like a step, I can always go back to the previous step. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and in the next lecture, we will start to add our page content.